All right, I'm scouting a location for a photo session this week and I thought I'd take you along with me and give you an idea of my thought process when I'm scouting a location. Monique here, Silver Paw Studio. Hey, that happens to be my husband, Steve. Hey, Steve. <laughs> and founder of ProPet Photog. I'm at a location that I have photographed at before, but I wanted to see what else there was. Oh, what a beautiful Sunday. And to give you an idea, we are at Colorado State University, CSU, here in lovely Fort Collins, Colorado. There is the foothills behind me and it's anti campus, it's summertime. So uh, let's take a look around. The first thing I would recommend when you're scouting a location, do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> is to go out there at the same time of day as that you will be doing the photographs. So this will be a sunrise session. We're about three hours past that right now, but I know this campus well enough. I'll know kind of where the sun and shade are. So I'm just kind of scouting for general locations, but the first thing you should do when you scout locations is go out at the same time of day that you're gonna do your session within a couple of weeks to a month because the location of the sun, of course, will change in the time of sunrise. So that is my first recommendation. <laughs> All right, so I like this spot. It has lots of big boulders to get up on. They're good size, they're good size. I think they sometimes have like fire pits after football games here. Uh, so I'd wanna keep, you know, dogs out of that. But this is a really great place and I know the morning light is gonna be there. Um, so my tip number two is to know what direction you're looking in and know when the sun will be coming up or going down, whatever you're doing. Uh, in Colorado, in the Front Range, how do, we, how do we tell directions in Colorado, Steve? Uh, mountains, west. <laughs> Northeast, south, and towards the mountains. <laughs> yeah, so the mountains back there, that's, we already know that's west. And so I know the sun's gonna come up over there. You can kind of see it's what, 10 o'clock right now? The sun is coming at me right here. So it'll be over there. So I know that they'll have nice direct sun right here on these rocks with, you know, the, the foothills and the stadium in the background, but I can edit some of that. So I really like this spot, it's very simple. So know, know what direction you're facing and where the sun will be. Tip number three is be aware of what the light is gonna act like in different conditions. Right now, oh, it is glorious, glorious overcast day. It's like one giant softbox. Every single place looks like a good place for a photo. But if the sun comes out, oh no, I like to shoot in open shade and not have all these hot spots and dappled light from the trees. And you gotta know where you're gonna find those situations wherever you're scouting. So right now, yeah, it's a beautiful overcast day, but what if the sun was out in the morning? Where am I gonna go? So you gotta keep that in mind uh, when you're out scouting locations as well. Uh, overcast or cloudy day might seem like, oh, every place is great, and you pick out all these spots, and when you get there, the light is so bright and harsh, there's just no way. Uh, so keep that in mind, too. That is my tip number, what, three? Three. <laughs> okay, three. Water. If you are near water, it's gorgeous. You can get some great reflections. There's a lot of awesome things about water. But if you're photographing dogs, many of them can't resist jumping in water. So always, always, always ask your client ahead of time if their dog absolutely can't resist water and at what distance. Some dogs, they need to be 100 feet away. Some can be five feet and they're fine. Others, they're just gonna run for it no matter what, and others just don't care. <laughs> uh, so find out ahead of time, like this lagoon is gorgeous. If you watched my other video about Wonder the Little Black Puppy, we did all of their session here, um, and this was a gorgeous fall scene. Uh, so this is beautiful in the fall as well, but I love the lagoon. Look at these rocks. Yeah, look at the reflections, all of that. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. What are we at, number five? Let's say number five <laughs> is look for distractions in the background. So at a place like this, an urban-ish environment, there's cars and buildings and light posts in the background. But at this particular lagoon, oh, let me come over here, you can see there's a big 
post there. And there's actually quite a bit of art around this campus. So not only the post, but the reflection of the post, okay? So how are you gonna deal, deal with that on location? If this is where the best light is right here, you're gonna have that in the background? Or can you move five degrees and get it out of your image? Yes, you can edit that out, but it would be better just to go boop and it's out of your image. So look for distractions, especially things like cars, sculptures, um, and bigger things that are hard to erase. <laughs> uh, so be watching for distractions as well. Okay, number, I wanna say six, uh, posing places. Always be looking for places that you can have your dogs or your people get up and down from. This campus has massive amount of these large boulders and they're awesome. They're so, so perfect. Like there's some near the lagoon, there's some near the trail with the plants in the background, nothing disturbing it, like uh, nothing distracting in the background. Look for all kinds of posing surfaces. It could even be a hillside where they're more up on a hill and you're a little bit lower. That's a cool angle. Benches, all kinds of things. Always be looking where you're gonna put your subjects. Uh, dogs especially, they do well when they're they know where they're supposed to be. And so like dogs that have been taught place, they'll know, oh, okay, I'll just stay on this rock <laughs> or this bench. You'll have their attention just a little bit longer. All right, leaving the lagoon, it's so pretty there. Uh, number hmm, seven, <laughs> consider how busy the location is. If you have especially maybe a reactive dog, I try to go places on weekdays. Uh, this campus in the summer is very quiet. This is Sunday. Sunday during the rest of the year, this would be all kinds of activity going on and Frisbee playing and, and all kinds of things, uh, which is one of the great things about CSU. But if you have a photo session, right, you don't want to have to be always kind of getting out of the way of people or taking them out of your scene later in Photoshop. Uh, I have a really pretty park in our town also that a lot of people want to go to. And I always say, no, I'm not going there because it's way, way, way too busy. It has a dog park attached. There's just, it's too chaotic, even though it's pretty. So I always try to find somewhere more out of the way. So consider the activity level at your location. I think there's a bug on my face. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Number seven, I was really hoping to find this. A little bit of color. So we've got this bush that still has just a teeny bit of flowers on it. And so this is perfect. The flowers go all the way down to the ground. This would be a beautiful place to get a little pop of color in your photo. So be looking for areas of color, especially midsummer where everything just kind of turns green, which is super pretty and lush too. But it just gives a little bit different look to some of the images, it breaks up the portfolio of images you show them. And so a little bit of color is always on the lookout for me. Stonework can also be a really great place to pull color in. Okay, tip eight, <laughs> I wanna say eight, is maybe bring your camera. So get the perspective and the depth of field of your camera, like if you're using a long lens, uh, that changes the scene and if you're, maybe more of a beginner and you're having a hard time with visualizing what this will look like, uh, bring your camera or just get down to the level that you're gonna photograph. I'm always laying on the ground <laughs> when I photograph dogs and families, I'm always at their eye level. Um, so this is a perfect example of that, is in this little field of trees. Uh, and I did some photos here before and there's a slight a slight uphill. So in the background, there's a parking lot and there's a building and all these things. But if you get down low, all of that goes away with this slight hillside. And so you can really see, I'm gonna put the camera over there. You can really see, look at how much that changes. You zoom in with your long lens, that's gorgeous. Instead of with the cars and everything else up here get way down low, really visualize exactly the photo you're gonna take. There's dogs behind us. Um, oh, I'm zoomed in, okay, <laughs> puppies. Uh, tip number nine is watch, uh, well, be prepared for any lighting. So watch for lighting in here. So although you think that some light's gonna reach in, when we get into these dense trees, I don't know if you can tell, there's a, a sudden change. <laughs> if I had my client sitting out of those trees, it's very dark under there. And I can picture that without the clouds too. So consider what light you wanna bring with you too, whether a flash or a reflector, or just maybe not put them all the way under the trees. So 
uh, be cognizant of how light and dark each of your areas are because that's that's pretty dark. All right, number 10 uh, tip when you're scouting locations is look for spots that will fulfill all of your shot list. So if you saw my video from a long time ago, <laughs> I have tight, middle, wide, epic, and creative that I suggest you take, if you can, at every session. And I actually have a free download for that. I'll link that in the description. Um, so is there a spot where you can take an epic picture? Epic would be like that big wide shot that shows the location you're in. Places like CSU, a lot of my clients are students or teachers here, and they wanna see CSU in here. And so I always ask them, is that something important to you? And so some of these vistas would be cool to see the building that they work at in the background, things like that. But also don't discount the tiny little locations that you might find nestled back in a tree for your close-ups. Look for not only big vistas, but places for those little, you know, headshot type things. So uh, that is tip number 10, tight, middle, wide, epic, creative. Make sure you find spots for all of those. Okay, I think that scouting mission's done. Uh, my goal is always to find three, maybe four locations. You always want the one that you didn't go to, right? And then when you're at your session, leave yourself open to go to other locations. My client uh, is at this campus a lot, and so she might have a special place that she thinks of while we're here but I'm always looking for three or four spots. So, there oh goodness, go. I did think of one more tip. Safety first. Always be sure, we talked about that at the lagoon with the water, but anywhere, safety first. Make sure that dogs are loud at the location that you're scouting, absolutely. Make sure there's no like bee's nest or snakes around. There's no cliff sides. <laughs> always, always, always be making sure safety first at these locations. Okay, I don't know if that goes without saying, but I had to add it in there. There you go. That's what I've got for you on scouting locations for your next dog or portrait photo session. Uh, if you have any others, please add them to the comments down below. Um, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> As always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.